Let's take this now to Dr. Tom Frieden, the director of the Center for Disease Control. You just heard Dr. Besser right there. Is he correct? Well, absolutely. The virus is moving so fast, but our response is moving very fast as well. The Defense Department is on the ground. They're working with 135 of the CDC staff who are there. They're working with USAID and others. Uh, the challenge is that putting up a treatment unit is not easy. It's not a question of construction. It's about training, supervision, supply chains, and all of that is, is moving but uh, we wish it would move faster, but it's moving a lot faster than it was just a week or two ago. I want to get back to that in a minute, but let's talk about the situation here in the United States now uh, a a as well. We heard that uh, a patient treated in Nebraska for Ebola, Dr. Richard Sacra, is now back in the hospital in Massachusetts. What can you tell us about that? It's extraordinarily unlikely that it would be a recurrence of Ebola. We've never seen that, but we're not going to take chances. So we'll test and, and we'll see. Time and, will tell. And the situation in Dallas right now, nine people considered at relatively high risk coming in direct contact uh, with Mr. Duncan. Anything more on their condition right now and whether they've developed any symptoms whatsoever? Last we've heard, no one has developed symptoms of those who had contact, but we're going to check every single day because some people did have, particularly family members, a lot of contact when he was sick. And we know that his condition uh, is uh, quite critical, so we're really hoping for his recovery. Is there anything more you can do for him right now? Right now, the best thing to do is that meticulous kind of clinical care of supporting his fluid and electrolytes, doing everything possible. And that's really the kind of thing that we want to get up and running in Africa as well, supporting fluid balance and helping people survive, not just to reduce deaths, but so that more people will come in for care and there will be less spread in the community. We saw that breakdown in communication at the hospital in Dallas. Are you confident that hospitals now across the country are prepared, have all the tools, have all the information they need to deal with this. Of course, I know you're getting uh, so many more reports now coming in every single day. Well, the, the way to stop this in its tracks, which I am certain we will do in the U.S., is when there's a case to do contact tracing and follow-up, as is being done in Dallas, and to have an index of suspicion so that if there is any concern that someone might have Ebola, immediately assess, isolate, and if appropriate, test. And that's what we're doing. We expect to see more concerns, more rumors, and more possibilities of cases that require investigation. That's what we're doing. But no sign of any new cases right now? No. We've had no other case. In fact, uh, of the well over 100 cases we've been consulted about, the only one that staff told me, you know, we're really worried about this one, was the patient in Dallas even before his test result came back. We saw that newest flight scare at Newark Airport yesterday. More calls for more drastic cutbacks on travel, restrictions on travel for many, including some prominent Republicans who are considering runs for the White House. I want to play them. Take a listen. It's just common sense. Why wouldn't we do everything we can to protect our folks here in America, to stop these flights? We also have to be concerned about 3,000 soldiers getting back on a ship. Imagine if a whole ship full of our soldiers gets Ebola. The question that I think a lot of people are going to have on their minds is, um, what do you do with a person who is going to get out on a plane in West Africa and come to America? Should there be a quarantine time period or something like that? What's your answer to that? I think, first and foremost, our top priority is the safety of Americans and we'll consider any options to increase that safety. We have to recognize that, try as we might, until the outbreak is controlled in Africa, we can't get the risk here to zero. But we'll absolutely look at any suggestion that's workable and that wouldn't backfire. We don't want to do something that inadvertently increases our risk by making it harder to stop the outbreak there. Because if it spreads more widely throughout different countries in Africa, that'll be even more of a risk to so us So are you considering here. any new measures right now? We're absolutely going to look at all of the suggestions that have come in to see what would work, what's workable, and what wouldn't have unintended consequences of actually increasing our risk. Our core mission is to work 24-7 to protect Americans, and that's what we're doing here. You know, finally, the researcher who first discovered the virus, Dr. Peter Piot, warned this week that there's a very real danger, what he calls a complete breakdown in parts of West Africa. Other researchers suggesting the possibility of a global pandemic. How real is that threat? Well, first off, here in the U.S., I remain quite confident we will not have a widespread outbreak. We will stop it in its tracks because we've got infection control in hospitals and public health that tracks and isolates people if they get symptoms. In Africa, the story is different. We did help Nigeria, Lagos, stop an importation. They had one case. They ended up having to do 19,000 home visits. They had more than 1,000 health workers involved. We had to bring our own staff, a dozen of them, and 40 of our trained epidemiologists from around Nigeria to help 
with that response and they look like they've stopped the outbreak there. But that kind of intensive response is hard to marshal everywhere. And I'm quite concerned, the longer this goes on in these three West African countries, the greater the possibility that other countries in Africa are going to have to fight this on their territory as well. So much danger still out there, Dr. Frieden. Thanks very much for your time this morning.